Glad to have you join us on the program Flipside with yours sincerely, Olui J. Oikokai. Today on Flipside, we'll be looking at International Day of Zero Waste. Yes, International Day of Zero Waste. And to discuss with us, tell us more about this day, is the person of Professor Mike Omoig Birali. He is a Dirt State Chairman, Environmental Society of Nigeria. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Glad to have you here. Same here. All right, so before we delve into the program proper, let's go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about International Day of Zero Waste. Don't go nowhere. Healthy food isn't always tasty, but with regards to bananas, this isn't the case, which is why it's doubly pleasing to learn that they not only bring satisfaction to your taste bud, but also a great many benefits to your health. We'll be looking at why eating just two bananas a day can seriously improve your health. Bananas reduce high blood pressure thanks to the fact that they contain around 420 milligrams of potassium. Bananas are rich in fiber, which makes you no longer want to eat once consumed. Bananas also contain a kind of starch that reduces your appetite and stops you gaining weight. It reduces the level of sugar in your blood and raises your body's sensitivity to insulin. If your body's cells are sensitive to insulin, they can't absorb glucose and your pancreas begins to produce it in a larger quantity. Whether the body accumulates fat depends on the insulin present. Anemia causes tiredness and breathlessness. It's the result of a reduction in red blood cells and a low level of hemoglobin in the body. Bananas contain a lot of iron which stimulates the production of red blood cells. Bananas also contain vitamin B6 which regulates blood glucose level, helping people with anemia. Bananas are easily digested and do not irritate the gastrointestinal tract. Resistant starch contained in bananas is not digested and ends up in the large intestine where it serves as an effective nutritional medium for healthy bacteria. Bananas can be eaten when a person has gastritis and heartburn and restore the minerals lost when a person suffers from diarrhea. They contain fipothium, which is required by our bodies in order to receive cetrotony, the happiness hormone. On average, each banana contains around 27 milligrams of magnesium. This mineral is responsible for producing a good mood and healthy sleep. Bananas are rich in vitamin B6. On average, one banana contains around 20% of our daily requirement of vitamin B6. This helps your body produce insulin, hemoglobin, and amino acid. They are needed for the creation of healthy cells. Although we usually think that oranges and strawberries contain the greatest amount of vitamin C, bananas actually contain 15% of our daily norm of these important substances. Vitamin C is an important antioxidant. It also helps keep blood vessels healthy and produces collagen. The potassium content in bananas protects your muscles from cramp, while the carbohydrates provide you with enough energy to endure a heavy workout. All right, glad to have you join us. And in case you just turned on your TV, yes, you are on to flip side with your sincerely. Oluiji Uikokai. And today we're talking about International Day of Zero Waste. Now, I know someone out there is already asking, 
Can that be possible? Can we actually achieve it? And to do that with us is the person of Professor Mike Omoig Birali. He is a Dear State Chairman, Environmental Society of Nigeria. Now, the theme of this year happens to be boosting waste management and advancing resources. Now, humanities on sustainable production and consumption practice are driving the planet towards destruction. Now, households, small businesses, and public services providers generate between 2.1 billion and 2.3 billion tons of municipal and solid waste every year from packaging and electronic to plastic and food. However, Global Waste Management Service are ill-equipped to handle um, this issue and with 2.7 billion people lacking access to solid waste collection and only 61 to 62 percent of municipal solid waste been managed in controlled facilities. Now, quickly, we want to ask uh, our prof here. Now, we're talking about International Day of Zero Waste. Now, first off, what is waste management? Well, waste basically is any unused material, any worthless material, some that is of, of no use to you. Yeah. <clears throat> and mankind, in the course of evolving, carrying out whatever activities, waste are always generated. Yeah. Now, the ways and manners that you now decide to dispose of this waste, uh, manage this waste so that it will not become an issue in the environment, it, not becomes an, it doesn't become an environmental problem, or so that is what will, all these different forms of managing this waste, what we refer to as waste management. Okay. So basically that is what it is, managing the waste to an extent that it will not be a problem to either mankind or to the society. Okay, now, do you feel we're actually managing our waste? Because let me take myself for an example now. Just in a day, let's say I want to use um, a polythene bag to preserve my waste. I find out that before the end of the day, the waste is more than even what I used for that day. Now, how can we actually manage these wastes? Well, there are different ways of managing waste. Mm. In, this, in the university environment and the academic environment, mm. we have the word we refer to as the four R's, okay. which is re, uh, <coughs> reuse, recycling, reduction. And then, but more importantly, we also have the one we call, refer to as pre prevention. In other words, first of all, you need to prevent the waste being generated in the first place as much as possible. Okay. Where that is not possible, then you reduce the amount of waste that is generated. Okay. And if you move on, it's, it's, it's like a pyramid. Mm. Yeah, from the, you know, from the peak down to the To the base. bottom. Yeah, so you keep yeah. going, and then at the end of the day, you have, if you are unable to, the ones you can reuse, and then recycle. And then finally, you, this are, so these are different ways of mine. So when, when you take the scenario that you just painted, yeah. that the amount of waste, at the end of the day, you discover most of those waste that you probably would have generated in a day, mm. you probably, there was actually really no need for all that waste in the first place. Okay. Because many of the, many, many of the things, they, they actually, some of them can be reused. Yeah. So, some of them shouldn't even have been a waste mm. in the first place. Yeah. Because yeah. If, you had, if, you have op, if you had optimally managed your... Uh, your activities in, in the first place, mm. there will be, that amount of waste will not have been generated okay. in the first place. Okay. I know someone out there will be like, how will I be able to know which I can manage and which I can't mm -hmm. manage? Um, how will I be able to know the one that I can actually take out for it to be reused again? Because so many persons, they don't even know that plastic waste, some persons use them to build houses. No, that's correct. So how can one know if... Um, a sachet of water now can be reused again, and how can that be packaged from the normal waste? There are different ways of, of, of uh, doing that. Mm. Uh, it could be sometimes in a way ignorance on this part of some persons, mm. but let me use myself as an example. Okay. I go to the office every day, yeah. and I have my flask of water. Mm. So with my flask of water, it means it's food. I get my, take my water from the house. Mm. It means I do sure. not buy sachet water. Yes. I also do not buy um, bottled, bottled water. water. Mm. So by doing that, it means that uh, there's less plastic 
in the environment. Mm. Again, at the end of the day, you discover that a lot of persons can just do little things like this. Let's go to your household also. Yeah. You want to eat. How much food do you want to eat? Mm. Knowing fully well that, oh, this amount of food, I probably will not finish it. Because if you don't finish it, what is left over, if nobody mm. takes it, that becomes waste. Waste, yeah. So why don't you take what it is that is uh, just enough for you? Mm. So you, that is why I'm talking about preventing the waste in the first place. Mm. So if we take a, we take a conscious effort to actually look at what it is, those materials that we really want to use, mm. and be more important, more importantly, would be efficiency. In other words, using less material but for a greater output. Mm. We discover that the amount of waste will definitely be will be lower or will be less. Okay. So that's basically what it is that we want. That's why I just gave, you want to mm. take a search. Uh, you are you getting a plastic bottle or plastic uh, bag, you are going somewhere. Mm. Fine, you use it. You come back, you clean it up, keep it. Tomorrow again, use the you same plastic bag. You reuse it, yeah. You reuse it. Mm. You come back and then after a while, you, or you use materials that can easily de uh, biodegrade. In other words, when they eventually dump into the environment, mm. they decay. Mm. So these are different ways of managing uh, uh, waste and uh, okay. that work. Okay, now, since Measures. we're talking about different ways of managing waste, yeah. what are the different ways that one can actually use in managing these waste products? There are different, there are, there are different types of waste that are generated. So yeah. depending on the waste that is generated, mm. so there are, there are specific methods also used or techniques used for managing such waste. Mm. So for example, which is not very common in this part of the country, you have maybe nuclear waste, for example. Nuclear okay. waste are handled by highly skilled and te you know, uh, individuals. Okay. And these, pe these persons can handle this waste, mm. I mean, the nuclear waste, because yeah. it can be very, very toxic. Mm. Uh, and we, we, we serious, uh, can affect, uh, you know, man Humanity. and the environment. Yeah. Then you have electronic waste also, which is becoming very, uh, you know, common in our environment. Mm. That's also so managing the waste. Uh, the electronic waste, for example, the components of those, many of the components can be very, very toxic mm, also. Mm. You have chemicals and all. You have agricultural waste. Yeah. You have household waste. Which you're mm. just your uh, mm. household waste. You and I know how and that, waste. And that is, is mm. more common. Yes, very, mm. very common. Mm. Mm. And so for your household waste, for example, you have the organic and you have the, you know, the organic, many of them are organic components, mm. your kitchen waste and all. These are some of them that can also be reused to perform, uh, you know, com uh, compost, yeah. as that is manure mm. for agricultural uh, products. products. You have yeah. medical waste, for example. When mm. you go to the hospital, you find a situation that these are extremely very, some of them are very, very dangerous. So mm. they use incineration, incineration methods. Yeah. That was they burn them. Then there's a problem again associated with that. Mm. When you burn them, they are, what happens? You have, uh, you know, uh, the particles from the, they are released into the air. The air that yeah. becomes again, add to air pollution. So at the end of the day, you find that depending on the particular waste, there are metals. Uh, but the most common one in this part of the country, in this part of the world, in our climate, is actually, uh, you know, open and waste disposal mm -hmm. where you have, uh, mm -hmm. uh, not landfills, uh, dump sites where you have that are, you know, the sort waste of scattered all over being the, everywhere. Processed and, them. and here, no, they are not processed. Mm -hmm. They just go there and dump them. So then it also have its own associated problems. But we, we also have those persons that come along to pick some items. Yes, scavengers. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, from and there. take it from that um, position to be reused yeah. in another place. Yeah. Now, I want to ask now, I was reading somewhere and I saw um, informal and formal waste management. Okay. Now, when we talk about the formal waste management, is this something that we all can be associated with? Yeah, formal waste management, you are talking about this, where there is a, concern, uh, where is a, a, a concerted effort by the government all right, to ensure that waste are adequately, adequately uh, you know, are managed. Okay. In other words, they move from, your, if you, you are from its point of the source of generation mm. to where it will be properly and finally disposed. Yeah. Yeah. While on the, on, the other, on the other level, informal, uh, just as the name implies, yeah, yeah. there is basically no rules, or, uh, no rules, no guidelines with regards to you know, mm. disposing of such, uh, such yeah. waste. So yeah. we have a lot of waste managers here mm -hmm. you know, in a dose state, for example, mm -hmm. our immediate environment. Mm -hmm. And they come around, move your waste from your house, but ultimately what happens to those waste? Mm -hmm. The point when it comes to waste management, there are a, lot, a few things, fundamentals, that need to be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. For example, the first thing you're talking about, waste segregation. In some organizations, some companies, if you first of all needs to segregate the waste. Sure. In other words, you have, of course, you know the different colors of mm. it, through a couple of beans, mm. and then you know where you are dropping plastic, plastic. you are dropping metals, you are yeah. dropping, a, you know, the organic paper. waste and all. Mm. Yeah, the essence of this is that when it finally gets to the point of, uh, uh, you know, disposal, 
All right, they know precisely what to do with each one. Okay, okay? so that uh, the whole process of reusing them or recycling them is much much easier. And these days, there are people also making money because we're talking about scavengers yes, just now. Yeah, yes. people are also making money. That is why we have the we have the there is this mantra that uh, you know waste to wealth. Mm. We have people recycling different materials. This is what you consider waste becomes a, a, a source of waste to, to someone to else. Someone else. Yes, so it, yes. It's also beginning to happen in our yeah. line. True. Yeah. There was actually a video I saw yeah. of um, a woman, not even in Nigeria anyway, yeah. Yeah. I think in the um, western um, um, part of, our, of, of the world. Yeah. Now, um, she picked some used bottles, yeah. those she has already used them, and took them to a particular point. And the machine looks like where we go to dispense cash. And that is for bottle. Now, she says that it depends on the amount of bottles you put in there. And Maybe. you find you, you being paid. That's correct. Now, we don't find that in our society. It's gradually happening. Okay. It's gradually happening. Uh, just yesterday or day for, uh, so, we were, in a, a, we were in a forum where we had this uh, very extensive conversa conversation on a uh, waste uh, management and also even in those state here mm. Benin city we have a we have plastic recycling people don't throw away your plastic this is yeah. get the plastic some persons come around pick up the plastic take it to the uh, where is it be, uh, is reused or recycled okay. and then they weigh the number of uh, the amounts and then you get paid for it mm. in part in some part of lagos in some part of abuja it's also beginning to uh, gain traction so but we just need it to you know to have a, a widespread across the country because the majority of our of uh, the people still see every waste, anything that is generated that is on worthless to them or whatever, that it needs to be discarded. Mm -hmm. But the problem again is, if you're very briefly, is that it, the discarding it is not the problem. Mm -hmm. How it is discarded, how yeah. it is discarded. That is mm -hmm. what constitutes a nuisance to the it's environment. Society, yeah. yeah. You wake up in the morning and maybe about 5 a.m. before anybody could come, to her, what do you do? You quickly gather your waste mm, and, and throw your dump outside. Dump it, yeah. Dump it outside. Yeah. That's what happens. Mm. You find some persons who are driving this, uh, they are going to work, going for their school run. Mm. They have a, they have a bag of waste in their cars. Mm. And then when they get to a, 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 a particular, a particular spot. place, they just mm. come back, open it, and then dump it. That is what is our problem here. Mm. It's, a, and it's a very, very big problem. Then what about during raining season? The, you find uh, them coming out also. Ultimately, this is mean what happens during this dry season. Mm. Now that we are experiencing now, yeah. and of course, in, in uh, during the rainy season, yeah. the problem the, the the problem is increased. Yeah. Why? Because you now have water moving these uh, dumps, yeah. uh, and uh, you and I also feel that oh, any waste from your house needs to be dumped outside in the gutters, in the drains. Yeah. It always find itself it's, it's in the river. Yeah. You, if you to move around when when it rains, especially when the drains are filled. You find the plastics everywhere Floating, because yes. plastics are less dense than the mm. water, than the water. So they are, they all float. They block our drains, and we are crying every day of what mm. uh, of flooding our homes. It, the, the problem is you and I are basically to a large extent are the one causing the problem because the government is doing its uh, its part. But mm. the people, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this on air. Mm. There's so much indiscipline in this uh, client. So much indiscipline, and the bulk of the problem of, you know, trying to tackle the problem of waste management is actually a lot of indiscipline. Mm. I remember growing up many, many years ago that every vehicle, commercial vehicles in this, uh, in this city, we had a, a, a waste bin in, yes. in the vehicle. Yes, but today, yes. what happened? You are driving or you are moving on the street, and somebody just, just finished someone. eating, and then we have this attitude of eating on the, on the road. When it's time for the May season comes and everybody mm. eats corn, <laughs> and then what happens? You just nobody thinks twice before you dump anything on the road, mm. or on the uh, on the on the sidewalk or whatever. And all this, when it, the rain comes, it will always carry all of them mm. and block your drains. So the indiscipline thing needs to, to be seriously addressed. Now, what you just said made me remember mm. when we went to Calabar for excursion when I was yeah. in mm. school back then. Um, I remember. There was someone that actually wanted to throw something out of the car, and the driver shouted, I can't pay a fine, no. Yeah. And looking at the whole scenario, while we're in Calabar, there was no place that you could find deaths Absolutely. on the road. Mm -hmm. And they said before, before they could achieve that sole purpose, lots of things went down. Yeah. Now, going back to what you actually said, talking mm -hmm. about discipline, 
So what happened or in Calabar? Can that actually happen here in Benin where you find everyone, maybe just whatever you're eating or whatever you're taking, you just need to put them back in your bag. Can we find that in, uh, in Benin City, in Edo State? I've been, pre I've been preaching that gospel for, for quite a while. Mm. Um, some, I'm going to say something that will going to probably surprise you. I'm somebody who believes in uh, what I call uh, the theory of scapegoatism. Mm. What I mean by that is that somebody misbehaves, you use the person as a scapegoat. Every other person will fall in line and land. Mm. That's the, what happened in Calabar. That's exactly what happened many years ago during mm. the, when Donald Duke was the, yes. uh, was the governor. Yeah. Yeah. I know that incident very well. Mm. You, even a few, a few years ago, I took some of my students on a field trip to Ghana. And when we got to the, while we were there, at about 11 p.m., the vehicle was driving. I mean, the driver that was taking us was there. And he stopped at a, check, at a, a traffic, uh, and the, like, there was nobody coming from any other part of the, uh, the other uh, yes, corner. Yes, but he just had to wait. And then somebody said, oh, driver, go ahead. And mm -hmm. the man said, we don't do so in Ghana. <laughs> but here, what do you find? <laughs> Every, when you stop, everybody will probably think that you have, there's something is wrong with even you. When, even when you see the so amber coming, light already, yeah. you're, you're gearing up to say, so okay, I must back, beat it. Yeah, coming back to the issue, if we can uh, do that, absolutely. Nigeria has never been short of policies. There are a plethora of policies, you know, to address every issues in this country. Mm. It has always been what? Implementation. I once had an opportunity of having a uh, you know, conversation with uh, the powers that be in Edo State. And I told His Excellency, I said, sir, you will make a lot of money in this state if we put sanctions in place. Mm. Somebody, uh, you know, uh, there's an infraction, especially with the issue of waste management, for example, the person gets to pay. Mm. And when he pays, let the, uh, the, uh, the media, everybody see what has happened. I said, oh, what happened? This was what he did. Mm. He threw, uh, you know, uh, you know, in dirt on the road, or yes. he, mis whatever it is, mm. and this is the repercussion. Every other person will fall in line. Mm. That is what is happening in Lagos. Lagos is generating billions of naira every mm. month for what? Yes. IGRO. Mm. Why? You go to the same people who have, uh, you know, who are engaging in this serious act of indiscipline in those states or in our state here. As soon as they get to uh, Ojota and Lagos, what happened? They fall in line. We are. You and I, you, uh, they all go out, out of this country. Yes. We all behave ourselves. As yeah. soon as we come to Nigeria, we come here, all of us begin to see that we are living in a jungle. <laughs> so the fact is that, look, there should be sanctions. There are more crimes committed in Western Klein than in, in, in here. Yeah. But the point is that the people themselves know that you cannot, there's a, there's a great probability that you will be caught hmm. to face the music yeah. for whatever. If you, in other words, if you cannot do the jail, don't yeah. do the crime. Yeah. But here, what happens? Everybody has this entitlement mentality. Mm. Do whatever you want to do, and you walk away. Mm. The man is driving on the road. He stands on the road, and then you 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 horn, you know honk your horn, mm. ask him to leave, and he looks at you and he abuses you. Mm. And, tell you, oh, I mean, and he does whatever he wants to do, and then he continues. Nothing happens. It doesn't happen anyway. That same man gets to uh, you know Abuja, for example. Mm. As he's entering Abuja, he behaves himself. He maintains himself. Mm. That is what we need to do in a, uh, here. It can be achieved. What happens in Calabar? What happens in Akwa Ibon and in some uh, in uh, Kwara State some years ago also? Yeah. We can also attain this at same milestone here. Okay. It's just for us to have the will, the political will to do it and say, look, there is no Godfatherism this time around. Yeah. Nobody is uh, whether you, you are, if you if you do the uh, crime, you do the jail. Mm. There should be sanctions, okay. and the government will make a lot of money out of it. Okay, so do you still feel mm. government is doing enough? Now, I also want to um, point an example. Yeah. I went to Port Harcourt of recent, and in the mornings there were some deaths on the walkway. Mm. Now, in the mornings I could not find them. And I had to ask my sister, I said, ah, where are the deaths? And she said, as early as four in the morning, mm -hmm. you find a government vehicle coming round, going round to pick all the deaths. Now, when we look at our streets, at the walkway, even in the marketplace, mm -hmm. we find these deaths. So do you feel government is doing enough to make sure that waste is being managed in a door state? I can say that uh, because I'm, uh, I know quite uh, those involved in it, they are, they are doing their best, but okay. their best is still not good enough. Yeah. You, you see, with increase in population, 
which we are all experiencing globally. True. And in those states, uh, Nigeria is not, uh, it's not left out. It's not left out. Yeah. There will definitely be a correlation with increase in the amount of uh, waste that is generated. True. So, but we find a situation where we're talking about planning. Mm. As the population is increasing, Urbanization is increasing, yeah. but facilities for the associated increase in waste are not, you know, mm. still, they, remains, they, they, the still remains the same. Mm. So they, they, that is, the, I think, that is basically the problem. Mm. More people, persons are moving in from the rural areas to the to urban, urban areas. Yeah. They will definitely generate waste. Mm. But the facilities, the infrastructures in place to evacuate this waste on a daily basis or mm. you know every other day basis, they are definitely not enough. This is where the government really needs to, you know, uh, you know invest, encourage individuals to do so. Mm. I will always say sometimes some of these things that happen is that it's not the place of government to invest. Government mm. just creates the enabling environment for investors to come to in come here in, yeah. knowing that there will be you know, they will, they will, you know, there will be profit maximization mm. or there will be high ROI, uh, that means return on investment mm. on whatever it is that they put in place. Government can do that, encourage individuals to do so because government can't do it alone, honestly speaking. All these different, I know they have uh, uh, some waste managers and all, yeah. but again, I don't think they are enough. Many of them make time, what type of vehicles are they also using? True. You see some of them evacuating debt as they are driving, mm. as they are moving to the dumps the, and what's happening? It's, it's poor, the thing is poor, uh, poor in the ways, yeah. littering the road. It, mm. Again, you and I in the morning, you, along this uh, Ubawa Lagos Road, sometimes around 5 a.m., 6 a.m., if we leave home early, we see some of these women sweeping, you know, sweeping, yeah. the road. they are doing their best. Mm. But what also happened? <laughs> the woman that is taking the child to school in the morning, mm. you see the woman, somebody sweeping, clearing the road, and then you finish eating and you dump it dump right it. In, mm. immediately. So it, it, the, the problems are multifaceted. But again, government just needs to lead. Mm -hmm. That's my. That's just the admonition I give. Government needs to lead, and every other person will follow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll be going on a short break, and when we'll come back, we'll be diving into plastic waste. Okay. Now we know so many persons they don't actually know plastic waste uh, something that can be um, economical. Absolutely. That can also generate wealth. That's good. I know somewhere. I think in um, is it Ghana or so. I saw someone building a house with plastic waste. So many persons, um, I read somewhere that it takes over 100 to 500 years um, before it, the plastic can be reduced, not even decomposed. So I, I see no reason why someone would just go out there and dump his or her bottle of water or plastic waste wherever he or she deems fit. Yeah. It again boils down to ignorance. A lot of people don't know that uh, you know plastics, you know, can stay that long. It will outlive, you know, many of us in over and over yeah. and over again. Sure. You're looking at about 450 to 500 years, yes. even in some cases to 600 years. Sure. This is your plastic bottle that you once you have after drinking, mm. or what we call maybe single-use plastic. Mm. Love in the environment, and it will be there. Mm. It will have lived you, your grandchildren's <laughs> generations on, on, on. Mm. If That is what happens. Yeah. But again, we are beginning to find uses for it these days, yeah. in terms of uh, you know, in reusing some of them, in recycling some of them, yeah. and it's beginning to generate a, a source of income for some you know entre entrepreneurs. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, one of the ways we definitely will be able to curb uh, plastic because we cannot stop using plastics, mm -hmm. and the reason is very simple: they are cheap easy to manufacture and they are not as you know you can easily easily available True. and they are, um, you know re really the plastics are readily anything you want your plastic are always there yeah. so because of these factors our plastic being cheap readily available amenable and all mm. you will continue to use plastic so what we'll do is have what how do we mitigate the impact of the effect mm. of it that is basically the best we can do where plastics is concerned. Mm. So how can we manage plastic waste? Again, or do you feel individuals, first you of and all, I, well, can manage? First of all, what we refer to is single-use plastic. Mm. What we mean single-use plastic is used once and you discard. No. You can use plastics, uh, particular plastic, over and mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. So when you use something over, it, it, it reduces the, you know, how much you will get. Mm. Just like I gave you an example earlier, I have a plastic flask or mm. a bottle, you know, that I have. 
And so at, I, I just got water from my dispenser in the house, mm -hmm. turn into it, and they come. So that could, I don't have to buy, you know, say that sachet water or so bottled bottle water, water in the house. Mm -hmm. So then those in the R and D sector, you know, research and development sector within the university systems, and oh, we're also beginning to work in such a way that um, the component, these plastics, can be biodegraded. Mm -hmm. It's a, there's a lot of work going on in that sphere whether in, in Nigeria and in also in, a, in yes, Western sure. countries, trying to, yeah. as much as possible, get plastics that one can, uh, you know, that can biodegrade, in other words, mm. can break down within a very, very short time. Sorry, yeah. yeah, because many of us will begin, to, and then let's have as much as possible alternatives to plastics okay. that are cheap. When you have alternatives to plastics that are cheap, like glass, mm. that's the funny thing. It's, it's so we can remember that you use glass rather than use plastics. Plastic doesn't only, it, it, it's not just that plastics are, you know, their presence can affect the aesthetics of the environment. Yeah. yeah. What, the, 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 what uh, the chemicals, the chemical composition of the plastic can also be a very serious problem. Mm. Yeah, well, can, so some of these chemicals are carcinogenic. Some of them can cause serious problems and all. And when these plastics also break down in the environment, they, be, they now break down into what we refer to as microplastics. Micro because you can't see them within the care, but they're actually there. And you take them in, they can also be vectors of diseases and all. So plastics has a mirage of problems. And so when we are, when we are aware, we are all enlightened about the problems associated with plastics. At least in our own, we also begin to uh, uh, minimize how, how much plastic that we use. Yes. Okay. Now, um, how can plastic waste enrich our society? How can a common man who never knew that plastic can make him rich or make him become an entrepreneur. So what can one do or what are the things that one can do with this plastic waste? Primarily now is that we have a, a, a plant in those states right now, or even I think in Benin City also, mm -hmm. where they encourage people yeah. to you know, get your plastics and bring it over. Yeah, so those of us that are, you know, drink, uh, you know, uh, bottled water and all, when you throw away your, your, the bottled water, you're throwing away a potential source of money, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, income. Mm -hmm. Just get people to begin to collect the plastics, whether it's sachet, uh, 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 the one for sachet water, mm -hmm. or bottled water, or bottled drinks, mm -hmm. or whatever, these pets, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, minerals, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Get them and then send to these various, there are sources, there are different places, locations where they, they, they get them, where they compress them, and then they are, they are now, these, these uh, plastics are now become a source of material for other aspects of the uh, developmental process in the environment. Mm -hmm. So that's primarily, that is what we should, all of us will begin to do. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, we live in a society where a lot of people are, are very proud. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not the one that will go and start picking plastics <laughs> and picking plastic. Get these plastics, put it in, bag them. People will come around and pick them, and they will, they will pay you for it. Yeah. They will pay you for it. Yeah. And so when we begin, if all of us, or to a very large extent, we call, encourage as many young people or youths or, uh, you know, to do this, to a very large extent, we minimize or reduce the amount of plastic that we find that That's are right. in the environment. Yeah. Okay, now, um, looking at the theme for this year, boosting waste management and advancing resources. Now, do you feel that we are generating enough resources from waste? The potential, it's, we are nowhere near the potential that, uh, in terms of waste that can be generated, uh, sorry, in terms of uh, income that, that can, can be, be generated, generated from it. We yeah. are nowhere near it at all because yeah. uh, where we are right now, we are still on the scale of one to 10, we are still probably at one yeah. or less than one. Because a lot of persons are definitely also not aware. True. And then, however, in other clients, all right, people are beginning to do the. You just you just made an example of a lady who went to mm. uh, something like an ATM yes, and whatever. Yes. You drop it there, mm. wait, and, and you're being and paid. And you just get paid immediately. Yeah. If that is not rocket science. Mm. Is that not possible here? If we have different, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, points. Here in uh, in this country, at some point, of course, I, all of us will do that. I tell you, no, there, you <laughs> will not find any plastic waste. Of Absolutely, <laughs> and it doesn't take a. It's not rocket science. Mm. It, it's just a will to do to do it. Set up a a, a, a point, a collection point yeah. at different you know locations within the city or wherever, 
and you get the as far as you are going to be paid in instantly immediately Inst instantly yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 there will be not there won't be a single waste okay. every plastic waste mm. in, in, the, in this town mm. yeah mm. those are the ways where this is where government comes in yeah, this to is encourage where individuals. individuals also comes in, in yeah. uh, to, you know to do uh, to carry out uh, you know such things mm. and another thing is also to uh, this is where the media also comes into play the government as much as possible publicize what it is that you are doing mm. I'm telling you now that there's a, there's a place in Benin, all right, where you can take your plastic waste to, all right, and then you'll be paid for it. How many persons know that, know that place? Mm. Where is the place? Where is the location? And I, can't, I can't really come up with the, uh, mm. uh, you know, with the address. Now. But these are information that people want. And if mm. one person does it, and the person gets a good return on investment, the, the information will go around. Mm. And so it begins to, you know, it, become, it, ha it will have a, what we call a cascading effect. And some persons probably maybe they are ashamed to pick a plastic daytime. In the night, they won't sleep. They will just be going picking plastics everywhere. Be knowing that by daybreak, they're definitely going to get some money. And, and they'll get richer. And they get richer, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So th these are where, they, where you and I, and of course, our attitude is very, very important. Our attitude is extremely very important. Because when you look at today's uh, the team, which is the International Day of uh, Zero, Zero waste. waste, is it achievable? Yeah, what they are actually saying is that waste, it's not that it will be. Uh, there will not be any waste. As far as there is mankind, mm. as, as far as we have industrial processes, we'll definitely waste generate, will always generate be generated. Yes. What he has trying to say is that are the waste be generated, can they be effectively managed mm. to the extent that they will not constitute a nuisance to mankind, to the environment, or, or whatever. That mm. is basically what the team is talk, talking about. Mm, mm. And I think it can be done. It can yeah, be done. So, so we can actually achieve Absolutely, zero waste. Let's have the political will or, or, or the way without to be able to put in these uh, facilities in place to mm. work towards it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in, in as much as we can achieve zero waste, I think um, we should also let the public know how we can dispose of our waste. Because we find some persons that actually don't have a waste bin. You also get to some compound. There's this um, makeshift um, yeah, yeah. bin yeah. center. Yeah. And all of that. So please, I don't know if you can actually educate us on how one can, you know, dispose of. Let's start from the house, the household first, mm. to minimize the amount of waste generated. Yeah. If you take a, make a conscious effort to minimize the amount of waste generated, mm. so we are, that is that is a starting point. Okay. Used outfit, for example. You, you see, sometimes we, we are so proud, mm. you know, even when we don't have. I remember you know, the good old days when you you have some clothes and they are not getting old or you have grown yeah, those clothes. You give, you give it, it out. To, you give yeah. it out. These days you give it out. The person is angry. You're giving me used clothes. What am I doing with used clothes? Mm. Now you don't. You have outgrown them. You can't use them. What happens? You are going to have to discard them. Mm. And these ones remain in the environment for hundreds of years. Shoes yeah. and all. So yeah. first of all, let us uh, you know minimize um, the amount of waste generated from the households. And then let everybody get a waste bin, mm -hmm. register with the waste managers who comes around to evacuate the waste so that they can, you know, do a proper, uh, uh, you know, disposal of the waste at the mm -hmm. designated dump, dump sites. sites within yeah. the city. Mm -hmm. And then also our attitude to do uh, waste outside, mm -hmm. where your place of work, in the streets and all, you know, as much as possible, let us minimize the waste. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm driving, for example, maybe I've taken something. I don't throw anything out of from the car. I leave it inside the car. When I get home, I take it and I'm do it, I'm do a proper, uh, you know, uh, do dispose of it uh, yeah. you know, properly. Yeah. So that is basically where you and I can come mm -hmm. in, primarily to properly dispose of our waste, minimize the amount that is that is generated in the first place, mm -hmm. which you and I can consciously do. Yeah. And then when we are told we produce, we produce this waste, mm -hmm. pack it properly. Because diseases are also associated with waste. I'm sure we all know that. Yeah. If you don't, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, properly, you know, uh, store the waste, store the waste mm. it will also become a problem for you for you in the house. Sure. Either rats or ro mm. uh, you know roaches and all, they they find themselves there and then they find themselves back into your house. Mm. So you see again, mm. uh, spending money for what actually uh, should be spent for other purposes. So you then, then get the waste uh, managers. To come around and uh, you know pick them. But, but, you, find, but you find you find some um, persons complaining about this waste managers. Now they ought to be coming maybe every month, and you wait for like a month, two yeah. months, three months, and they are nowhere to be found. Why would a waste manager come every month in the first place? Mm. You know how much waste is generated by a household in a month. I thought you should be coming around at least every other day or three, every four, every week. 
mm. at the end of a week. Because okay. so much a house, a, a house for, uh, for four flats, four flats, for example. Yeah. How many families are in the four flats? How much which is generated? Now you are saying they four. ought to be coming like like yes, how many e days? Every week. Yeah. Every, every week. Yeah. Now they don't they don't even come like in a month, and you are saying they should come every week. <laughs> So how is that going to be possible? That is where the government comes in. Mm. Because they are registered with the government. Government is the one that gave them license. Yeah. There should be a monetary team to ensure that what it is that they are doing, they are doing it well. And so when they are not doing it well, and how do you know this? You move around. Talk to the, uh, talk to the people they are supposed to, uh, the clients, that is the people they are supposed to serve the households. Yeah. And they know how, more, uh, how well the different uh, waste managers are, are, are performing their, uh, their, their duties. duties. Government also move yeah. around. Government officials also move down the streets. And then you see, you know, heaps of uh, refuse somewhere where it's not, it's not so supposed to be. Okay. Of course, you, who's the waste manager designated to mm -hmm. evacuate that waste? Mm -hmm. And why come it hasn't been done? Mm -hmm. If it's not done, sanction. Mm -hmm. I keep coming back to that. <laughs> Advocate for sanction. You sanction the, the, that particular one, and the other one knows that. Oh, wait a minute! I had to pay hundred thousand naira because I didn't yes, do my work the last, last time. time. I don't want to come into the, uh, have that uh, mm -hmm. sort of problem. Or your license will be revoked. And give it to some other person who is ready to do it. Yeah. And they will, they will sit up and do their work. Mm. But when somebody does anything, you know, these waste managers, they do whatever it is that they like. They don't come for a whole month and nothing happens to them. At the end of the month, they bring a bill for the month. Yes. Yeah. They bring Very a bill well. for the month and, wait, and they didn't work. Mm. Who am I supposed to report to? Mm. Who is supposed to have my back? That the waste manager, after, after two or three months, he tells me that I'm supposed to appear. Mm. Uh, is he in a, uh, is he a, co a court or you know, mobile court or whatever for refusing to pay? In the meantime, he has not come for over, for over yeah. a month or two to evacuate the waste yeah. in my company. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a two way thing. The government needs to, the government officials, those, the, of course, the local government also has to, they all have to be uh, uh, up, up and, and doing, doing. Yeah. Yeah, to ensure that those that have been given license that you carry out this responsibility, the responsibility. Because mm. yes. you, you, you even find individuals yeah. going all out to search for these um, waste, waste manager. managers yes. and telling them, okay, I want you to come to my home, yeah. come and take them my, my waste and all of that. Is that supposed to be? Absolutely not. It's not. Because the government, you, you have different uh, waste managers for uh, uh, different waste managers yeah. and they have de designated uh, uh, parts of the city or whatever that, that, that. But my friend was saying something yesterday, you, you know, the issue of this uh, waste man, uh, waste, as you to properly and effectively evacuate waste. And it does make sense during the workshop that we're in. Yeah. It did say, for example, I mean, the waste manager, management office, for example, is, I think I understand is designated under the office of the state government. Yeah, true. How is that? The seat of government, for example, and most of the officials and everybody of the this in Benin City, mm. how are they, are they really able to effectively manage what is happening in Auchi, for example? Mm -hmm. How are they going to effectively manage what is happening in Guabazua? Mm. Oh, so if it is that uh, it's ca it cascaded down to, yeah, the uh, local to, the, level. to the local level, yeah. to the world level, yeah. I'm sure maybe they will be able to do something uh, you know, mm. uh, much more uh, better than what it is that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Now, something just came to my mind. I was thinking now, what are the Western world doing that we are not doing to make sure um, there is zero waste? Because we find out that over there, they pay for these things. And in the morning, the trash can is empty and it's being deposited yeah. properly. Yeah. So what are they doing? that we are not doing, that government should put in place? You just said it. <laughs> that is what it is that they do, that we are not doing. Yeah. Every morning, in the, you just bring your, uh, your, your, uh, you bag your waste, yes. bring it out, mm. and there's a, there's a waste uh, compactor that drives through your street and, and pick it up. And pick it up and moves. I come back again to the question I asked, is mm. that rocket science? Not at all. It's not rocket science. So why come you and I, that is not, is that too big for a country like Nigeria? Or is still like a those states to be able to, yeah, uh, you know, to implement? Mm. Absolutely not. Is it, the only other thing you probably need to consider why they are not doing is probably are not consider, they don't think it's a priority. Mm. Yeah, if you think it's a priority, all right, make it, they get this same, uh, get this same uh, uh, equipment, the compactors, mm. and then have it properly designated and all stuff like that. And then who are who to, to do what it is. You could have a, a government, uh, you know, a private uh, partnership. Mm. PPPP to, ha to handle these things. Really? And uh, one thing I've come to realize about my people, our uh, people in those states and uh, Nigeria is that 
if they get good services, they will pay for it. Sure, sure. If they get good services, mm. they will pay for it. Mm. Why people are reluctant? I mean, if somebody comes around and evacuate my waste today. Mm. Yes. Oh, I'm happy he has ever. I'm expecting that he will come again in, a, in, in the five next, days time. Okay. And he okay. doesn't come for the next three weeks. I, I, I love the way you no, no, I love the way you say five days time. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I'm saying the next one month no, or two months. No, what what <laughs> happens to the waste that have been generated in the last one month? What do you do with it? Because we feel we're already used to it. We shouldn't be. Somebody once told me if you if you settled for half a loaf of bread all the time, mm. you will never know the value of a full loaf. Okay. Of a full loaf of bread. Yeah. Because, ah, okay, I will manage. Okay, I will manage. Okay, I will manage. No. Waste are not meant to be stagnant. They are not meant to be to be in one place for days on end. Yeah. Because they now become a veritable source of diseases, uh, you know, uh, diseases and, and yes, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. apart from the aesthetics, the smell, and all. It becomes mm -hmm. a, 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 a source of uh, diseases and all. They are not meant to be there. Back them properly, back them 24 hours, 48 hours. Fine, mm -hmm. let's say because we are in this environment. Let, at the end of the week, come around and move I them move away. Them, yeah. That is what you should do. Mm. And I can, it's not too difficult for us to do. Like you say, if it's, you not give it to, it's not rocket science. <laughs> if you give it to uh, uh, you know, a private individual who is proper with the right incentive and all, mm -hmm. you'll find that they will do it. But again, when it comes to issues of government in uh, here, our people feel that sense of entitlement mm. that after this is what government should do, what government should do. Mm. How we partner with government in carrying out some of these services and many of the things that we are supposed to do. Mm. Many of us are not aware, we don't know that we are supposed to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now before you go, I, I would love you to talk to parents out there because you, you find sometimes you're in the public vehicle. Yeah and maybe the child just maybe eats biscuits or whatever and um, the parents say throw it out throw it out yeah. and all of that so um i think this is an avenue for you to talk to parents mothers especially yeah. to educate them on, on how to properly dispose of yeah. these things i'll be happy to do that i work in the university of benin and my chief executive uh, my device chancellor is doing a great job there you come to the University of Benin everywhere, it's looking clean. very, very clean. Yeah. And I'm just to address the point you raised. I was driving one day I'm on campus, and there's a vehicle in front of me. Mm -hmm. and, then some, and then the next thing I saw, a piece of paper. Flying out. Flying out, flew, I flew out of the car. Mm -hmm. I drove, I stopped the car. I drove in front of the car, I told the driver to stop. And he stopped, one of the okay. shuttle vehicles on campus. Yeah. And I asked him, like, who, who, who threw away that? Uh, uh, you know, piece of paper. I said, that will be you. He said, yes. He mm. said, good. Just come down. Go and pick it. Okay. Come down. Go and pick it. And uh, driver, you may wish to wait for this person, person or you go. And the person. Mm. Go and pick it and then trash it properly. That is what parents should do. Yes. Parents, if a mother, especially during this school-run business, mm. we all see it all the time, maybe you get your, as you are going, it starts from the parents themselves. So you need to lead by examples. Yeah. Because children learn more by what they see mm. than what you tell them. Mm. You see a, a mother or a father after eating, whatever it is, and then he runs down the window of and, the, and then he throws out. What do you yeah. expect the children to do when they do? So the first of all, the parents first of all need to be disciplined. Mm. That trade, that it is not ideal, it is not proper to throw trash out of the uh, either from the window or from their houses, just to the streets or whatever. Mm. And then you now move on to the next stage of letting the children know mm. that it's also a very, very ba it's a bad idea mm. and it's actually not proper. It's just a matter of letting them know, educate them, mm. that look, don't do this, it is not nice, it is not proper. Leave it in the car. When we get home, we trash it you know, yeah. properly. That mm. is basically what we want to be admonish parents mm. to do. Okay. Yeah. Now to um, government. What would you say is um, your advice to government officials? I'll continue to uh, you know, say this. Government is doing, is, is, well, within the available resources, they are doing their best. I can say because I'm a little bit, uh, uh, you know, had a conversation with them sometimes. But I think they can do more. You also need okay. to prioritize, you need to prioritize that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, aspect, sector. Uh, that sector. Uh, yeah. Yes, thank you. So you need to prioritize it. Is anybody coming to Benin for the very first time? Mm. She's not happy. Yeah. 
When you enter, as soon as you enter from, you are coming from Lagos for the first time and you enter through this Aziz. Oh, no. And you're asking yourself, what is going on? <laughs> you turn to your left, dumped. Turn to your right, uh, you know, heaps of, uh, and then you move into the city everywhere. Mm. So the, 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 the government, they need to do more. Yeah. Yes, we, you see, we can, government can never be tired because people expect them to what it is that they need to do. Government needs to do more. And they're doing more simply is that prioritize, uh, you know, waste management. Get this, uh, you know, heaps and refuse evacuated early Clean enough. enough yeah. yeah. Get people to work and monitor the people that are working. Mm. Ensure that they're actually working. Because some persons get paid and they don't do the work. True. You go to the market, of course, marketing, for example, is in the evenings. At the time they close, in the morning, uh, you expect that by 5 a.m., 6 a.m., they, they uh, those who are in charge of that sector should be there to evacuate the heaps and, mm. the, and, the, and, the, and the refuse. Mm. But mm. You sometimes you leave it for days. Mm. And then the man comes to work at about 9 o'clock and then causes hold up mm. <laughs> you know, in trying to evacuate uh, you know, uh, the heaps. So that is where government needs to come in. They are already okay. doing what it is that they are doing, but mm. they can you know, do more. All right, government can do more. We as individuals, we as humans, yeah. yes, humans can also do more. Like Prof said, zero waste management or zero waste can be achieved. Okay it's science. all, you said? I said it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> it all has to start with you and I. Mm -hmm. All right, so it has been International Day of Zero Waste. Learn how to dispose your waste properly and learn how to also stay healthy. All right, I'll be seeing you again next week for another exciting time on Flipside, Prof. Thank you so much. We're definitely grateful okay. to have yourself a blessed day. Bye for now.